So I've been meaning to make this video for a while now, and if you follow me on, particularly on Twitter, you probably saw my recent rant about the Rolling Stones' top 40 emo albums of all time. Now this list included albums like Paramore's Riot and Say Anything's Is A Real Boy, and to that I have to say bullshit, because those albums, while I'm glad they enjoyed them and they definitely are fantastic albums, they're not emo albums. and. The reason I say that, you might think, well, yeah, they are. They came out during that period of time. Everyone called them emo. That's what they are. They're, you know, a lot of sappy love songs on there, things like that. And that doesn't classify them as emo. Emo is its own genre. Emo has its own distinct sound. There aren't necessarily strict rules for being an emo album, but there are definite boundaries and there are definite, definite sounds that classify something as being an emo album, a lot of these albums on that list do not have those elements. Particularly, there's six albums on that whole list out of 40 that I would say are actually emo albums, and they are emo music. And again, emo is its own genre. It's not just this broad classification of any music that sounds like it's you know whiny teens talking about their girlfriends leaving them and things like that. That's not necessarily emo. Emotional lyrics don't automatically constitute an emo album. Otherwise, most of the pop music of today would be considered emo as well, which is just an absurd notion. Now, whenever I bring stuff like this up, there's always somebody out there who has to say, who really cares? Who cares whether this album is emo or post-hardcore or whatever? It doesn't really matter, especially to the listener. And to that, again, I have to say that's bullshit because it does matter. Emo it, Classifications like emo do matter. They definitely matter when you're talking about music and describing music to people and things like that. They may not matter so much when you're talking about a store like Best Buy or anything like that where they have those uh, little plastic things that tell you what genre you're looking at. You know, they're usually broad over simplifications like just rock and R&B and, you know, hip hop and whatever. You know, they're, they're definitely uh, over simplifications of genres, but there it doesn't matter so much. You know, you know that you're going to find say anything under rock, for instance. You're not going to find them in the gospel section, for instance. But when it comes to actually describing music and talking about music, genres are very important. And you may notice in my reviews that I use genres a lot to describe music and to describe bands and describe what they sound like. And there's a reason that I do that. Genres exist for a reason because we can classify music that way. We can say, hey, this has you know, this has a, a strumming bass line reminiscent of these other bands, and these are what we'll call punk music, and this has the aggression, and we'll call this hardcore, and this has some kind of upbeat melodies and catchy catchy lyrics and things like that. We're going to call this pop or, or pop punk mixed in with that. And when you use genre classifications, especially again when describing music to somebody, which as I've explained before, that is what a review to me is. It's not so much me just saying, hey, I like this album, you should like it too, or hey, I hate this album, this album is terrible. It's me describing what it's like to listen to that album for you. So that way, before you even go out there and decide to try it, you kind of get a sense of whether or not you may like it or not and what it might sound like without actually having to listen to that album or purchase that album, anything with that, and that's where genres come in. If I start talking about, hey, this album has some pop punk elements like the uh, the breakdowns and the, the the catchy breakdowns and things like that, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If I start saying this is a metalcore album, you get a general sense of what this album is going to sound like. And it goes a long way into describing music and what it sounds like because it's a very difficult thing to describe music to people who have not actually, uh, who don't really know music, things like like that, where genres are definitely a simple way to convey what the album or what the music actually sounds like. 
So genres are very, very important, and to dismiss the idea of, of genre classifications is just asinine to me. And when you have lists like this, where things are, are misclassified and misgenred, like the Rolling Stones list, where all these albums are, are called emo albums, like Fall Out Boys, From Under the Cork Tree, albums like that, which I would definitely not classify as emo music, they're... they're you're doing a disservice to music. You're you're over oversimplifying something. You're you're just doing such a, a broad. You're just brushing everything so broadly that people outside, especially people who don't really necessarily haven't heard those albums or don't listen to those albums, are gonna see that list and see that music and just lump all those bands together when all of them on that list are so varied and so different that you really cannot do that. They might share similarities with each other, but they're definitely not within even the same genre as each other most for the most part on those albums. And you're gonna have people, and the reason I say this is you're doing a disservice, and the reason why I, I feel this is actually kind of dangerous when it comes to music is because you'll get people who hear bands that they think of as emo that are painted by publications like Rolling Stone or even even the more uh, alternative ones like Alternative Press and, and stuff like that where you have uh, bands that are labeled as such as, as emo and you have people that are going to say, well, I don't like... I don't like hearing whiny guys talk about their girlfriends while wearing skinny jeans and whatever. And that whole stereotype of emo within the that came out in the early 2000s, early to late 2000s. And you're going to have people who immediately associate emo with that style because that's how it was presented. And they're going to dismiss most of the bands on this list, whether or not they may have liked them or not. And that's where I mean you're, you're doing a disservice because you're not actually you're not helping anybody by doing this you you should just take some time they you know genres again exist for a reason i keep hammering that point because it's true and if something doesn't work you know every band isn't going to fit into one genre perfectly that's why they take elements from other genres and that's why you use that to describe music and and to talk about what it's going to sound like to somebody and sometimes you there is no classification sometimes you may even have to create your own genre you might actually have to come up with something to describe it and to, to classify it. You can't just lump it in there. And that's that's where I mean, do some work, do some research, talk to other people who, who know music and talk about music, about what genre these might fall into before you just go out there and just say, well, this is all emo music and that's it. And, you know, everyone talks about these as being emo, so they must be emo. And that's not exactly how things work. And I mean, I know I keep harping on particular on emo music, uh, but it's mostly because it was spurred on by this list of, of again the top forty emo albums of all time, where a total of six albums on this list, six six out of forty, were actually albums that could be qualified as emo. Maybe seven or eight on there. There's a few that were. I, I could definitely see the argument. Maybe somebody might have that there were uh, that they could be classified as emo, but. Other than that, there there's really none. You're, you're, there's nothing on there. I mean, there's pop punk bands, there's indie rock bands, there's power pop bands on there. There's nothing on there that really qualifies as emo. And, and again, you get people, you keep perpetuating this idea that uh, emo, for instance, is these albums and you're doing a disservice to music and to listeners and to people that may otherwise enjoy these without that label without that stigma that that emo has and that some other genres have you know there's there's so much out there and i just feel that genre classification is an important thing you can't just dismiss it and say who cares because that idea is just also dangerous because you know there are petty arguments over whether something is post metalcore or metalcore or metal versus metalcore things like that and I, I understand why those arguments exist and I've gotten into them myself but that I could understand get a little tiresome and maybe some people consider that to be petty but generally speaking at least you're in the same realm when you're talking about those things you're not talking about 
something that you're saying emo, and then you're you're describing a a power pop album, which are completely different things and share almost no elements with each other at all. And it's just disappointing to me to see such a, a popular uh, mainstream music uh, magazine and site just do something like this without considering what it's actually what the impact actually is on, on music and things like that so you should care about genres you should make that argument that you know get into those arguments about whether something is this or that those are those are can be very important arguments you know don't i'm not saying go burn somebody's house down over it because you disagree with somebody but i mean talk and discuss it that, that's that's how music that's basically what happens with music that's where that's how people discover music that's how we talk about music and it's very important to keep the genres alive